Well, here I am again selling wood gassers on the benefits of roadside wood chips. The gravity box behind me is about half full of 55 gallon drum liners filled with dry, sorted wood chips. A couple of days ago, I happened to drive by a site where some trees had recently been chipped along an interstate, interstate highway overpass. There I found some of the nicest piles of roadside wood chips that I have seen so far. Nice means good sized, relatively thick chips with very little stringy stuff or other trash. A high percentage of these chips that I found the other day are larger and thicker than anything that I've collected so far. The 42 pails of wood chips that I collected there had an initial classification run through my grain cleaner slash wood chip sorting machine. I did that to get rid of most of the fine stuff that was there as an aid in the drying process. This is an ongoing journey for me, so it would be good if you look at my previous videos and web pages on the subject. If you haven't already done so, look at the wood gas playlist on my YouTube channel, which is French Creek Valley, and look at my wood chip measurement page at spaco.org slash woodchipmeasurement.htm. I've been collecting, sorting, and drying, and using wood chips for several years, and I continue to learn more about them every time I get close to some. Right now I have about a half a ton of prepared wood chips stored in sealed plastic drum liners just waiting to be turned into carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So you might ask, what's new about the batch I'm going to tell you about today? Well, this site has some of the largest wood chips that I have seen so far and I want to show them to you. Here are the good chips that I normally try to produce. They don't fall through a half inch by half inch screen, but do fall through a one inch by one inch screen. You see 13 pails of them drying here in the sun. These are the chips that fall out the end of my modified green cleaner. They usually consist of longs and anything else that is too large to fall through the one inch by one inch screen at the end of my grain cleaner. This site that I was just at provided a high percentage of these large chips. In fact, the chips that are drying here are the largest chips that I have so far collected. Of the 42 pails of chips that I collected this time, 13 and a half were my normally good uh, sized chips, but 20 pails were of this really large size. I have already removed a couple of pails of longs from this batch, but I want to point out that this whole site contained very little of the tiny branches and other wood trash that I often see. I didn't have to cherry pick the gathering area to get chips that were this clean. Oftentimes, I'll have to kind of check a site, I'll walk over to see how, how uh, compact it is and so on to try to get a general idea where the chips are going to be bigger and, uh, and, and with less uh, stuff in them. You can see this if you look at my previous videos on the subject. I think I will have to try some of these two large chips just to see how they work. But I also plan to try to reduce their size by driving over them with a car or tractor once they have dried thoroughly. They just seem to be very nice chips. So now I'm wondering if these chips would work in an ember or Wayne Keith gas fire. If so, I think it might be worthwhile for those folks who have those kind of gas fires to go looking for the sources of this kind of chip, because obviously they do exist someplace. Here's a close-up of some of these large chips in their big pile. But they just wanted you to get an idea in a big pile the relative size of these chips. Just to recap, this is the these are the chips that I normally uh, use, and you can compare them with the XY size of these wood chips, and you can see the thickness of the chip by the number of millimeters uh, that. Uh, that size them with the uh, chip quality gauge. Some of these are really 
pretty big and thick and thick and these big size chips that's what's new for today just to recap this latest 42 pail load that I brought home 45 percent are of this large size chip 30 percent are of what I call my good uh, chip uh, that's the smaller chip that I normally use 10 percent or thereabouts these are all averages 10 percent are shorts and dirt uh, that I sorted out on my first run and about 15 percent so far of the longs that I have removed okay now we fast forward several days here's a short summary of this latest wood chip adventure between about April 28th and May 7th, I dried the chips. I placed the good chips on a 12 by 12 foot brown tarp that I laid out in the sun. I covered the chips each night and turned the chips once a day. The large chips were spread out on about, in about a 10 by 20 foot area on my garage floor. I left the garage door open all day and had a window fan blowing over that whole area 24 hours a day during this time. It was interesting to note that some of those large chips actually left wet spots on the floor for the first couple of days. As you know, the frost went out of the ground only about a month ago here in west central Wisconsin, so that floor was still pretty cool. I turned those large chips twice a day. At the end of the day on May 7th, I took samples of both groups and cooked them in the kitchen oven until they were bone dry. After making some calculations from before I dried and after I dried, I found the good chips were down to 5% moisture and the large chips were down to 10% moisture. That's good enough to bag and store. Now on to the yield results of the second and final sorting. When it was all completed, I got 31 pails of usable chips out of the 42 pails or so that I started with. I think that's about a 75% yield, one of the best yields I've ever gotten from roadside wood chips. I gained about four uh, pails of the good sized chips from this second sorting for a total of 15. And I lost five pails, so I'm down to 15 pails of my large size chips since some of them did end up in the good size uh, batch during that second sort. Lastly, I got one and a third pails of a chip that was in between good the one by one screen and the large size chips and the large size chips. So how did that happen you may ask? Uh, well these were chips from the second sort of the good ones where the chips didn't fall through the one by one screen on the second sort. Why not? I don't know but I did save them in a separate bag just because I could. And as I look at them they do on average look a little bigger than the average good size chip. Well, I hope you've learned a little more about the wide range of roadside wood chips available. The cost of obtaining them is only the cost of the fuel to go and get them. If you don't know where they are, just contact a local landscaping company, a contractor who works on public right-of-ways, or a utility like the electric company and start asking questions. In my case, a call to the town board secretary got me the phone number of the company that maintains our township road dishes. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.